Hello, everyone. Thank you to all of you for joining us for today's Healthcare Digest video, Understanding and Leveraging the Value of Accreditation, Episode 4. First, a little background about Gloria and I, your speakers today. My name is Faith Sapposantos, and I am a master's prepared nurse with a clinical lens. My clinical experience spans from the bedside to leadership roles across multiple healthcare settings, including hospitals and hospital systems, health plans, managed services organizations, and IPAs and medical groups. I have led utilization management and care management teams with a focus on optimizing outcomes through creating operational efficiencies and performance improvement. I've provided strategic guidance to healthcare leadership, developing organizational programs that produce actionable results and evidence compliance. I have delivered consultant services as a regulatory compliance auditor and performed compliance and accreditation mock audits operational enterprise risk management assessments for multiple healthcare settings, provided program, policy and procedure development, evaluation and revision, staff coaching, and interim leadership staff support. I have also managed the preparation of state and Medicare Advantage prescription drug plan license application filings. And now Gloria will share her background with us. Thank you, Faith, for that. My name is Gloria Vargas, and I am a master's healthcare professional with a clinical lens as well. My clinical experience spans multiple healthcare settings, including health plans, hospitals and hospital systems, IPAs and medical groups, and managed services organizations. I have led quality management teams focusing on HEDIS, QAR, Medicare stars on optimizing outcomes by creating operational efficiencies and performance improvement. In addition, I have led network management and contracting teams with a focus on network sales, ancillary, physician, and hospital managed care contracting, and credentialing, recredentialing, and delegated credentialing oversight. I had delivered consultant services as a regulatory compliance auditor and perform compliance and accreditation mock audits, provided UM program policies and procedures development, evaluation and revision, provided assistance to hospitals, community physicians, and IPAs on maximizing quality incentive revenues through developing strategic work plans. I have negotiate and renegotiate health plans, ambulatory surgical center, physicians and hospital managed care contracts, where I had an MLTC health plan network built. The objective for today's Healthcare Digest video is to move past all of the information that saturates the healthcare industry and truly understand the value of accreditation. Today, we start the conversations of what is accreditation and how to leverage its value-added proposition. We will first define accreditation, then identify, describe, and compare a few well-known accreditation bodies. Next, we will provide a high-level comparison overview to facilitate selecting the accreditation source that best fits your organization. We will then explore the value that each accreditation organization offers. And lastly, we'll put it all together, keeping in mind the overall benefits, best in class, and prestige that accreditation brings. In this section, we will define accreditation and simply discuss why accreditation is important and related benefits. We will also identify and describe a few well-known accreditation organizations. To put things in perspective, let's first ask the question, wouldn't you hesitate to undergo surgery with a surgeon with a medical degree from an uncredited medical school? Hmm. Accreditation matters. Accreditation is a process by which an impartial organization will review company's operations to ensure the company is conducting business in a manner that is consistent with national standards. It is an indication that the healthcare organization is committed to quality, continuously improving performance and compliance. As you explore what accreditation type is the right fit for your organization, you should consider selecting a source that fits your organization's mission, vision, and culture. 
The accrediting source must match the organization's complexity, clinical focus, and value. Here are several benefits of accreditation. It helps the organization achieve and maintain compliance with healthcare laws and regulations. Keep organizations up to date with industry standards, commitment to excellence in quality of care, accountability, and patient safety. Demonstrate the commitment to continuous quality improvement. Provides organizational structure and management framework. Improves risk management and risk reduction. You see, accreditation works. In healthcare, there are various accreditation bodies. Generally accepted organizations that perform accreditation and establish standards for healthcare delivery include, but is not limited to, National Committee for Quality Assurance, NCQA, Utilization Review Accreditation Commission, URAC, the Joint Commission, TJC, Center for Improvement in Healthcare Quality, CIHQ. Now that we've defined accreditation, identified and described a few well-known accreditation bodies, next we will explore the value that each accreditation organization offers. As the table shows, we've compared some common accrediting bodies at a high level. First, let's explore the well-known accreditation bodies for health plans, physician networks, medical groups, IPAs, pharmacies, telehealth, patient-centered medical homes, and the like. National Quality for Committee for Quality Assurance, NCQA, and Utilization Review Accreditation Commission, URAC. NCQA is the gold standard across the healthcare industry. It accredits a range of healthcare organizations and programs. Accreditation is earned by an entire healthcare organization for three years, and certification is earned by program or services for two years. Some states require plans to report HEDIS quality measures data to NCQA, and some require plans to be accredited by NCQA. Alternatively, URAC is the gold star but known as the easier route to accreditation. Similar to NCQA, URAC accredits health plan programs for two to three years. Some states and federal agencies require URAC accreditation as a prerequisite for utilization review organizations to operate in their states. Others accept URAC in lieu of state certification, all of which Gloria will describe in more detail shortly. Next, well-known accreditation bodies for all hospital settings surgery centers, home care organizations, nursing homes, long-term care facilities, behavioral health organizations, and ambulatory care providers. That's the Joint Commission, PJC, also known as the Market Leader, and the Center for Improvement in Healthcare Quality, CIHQ, also known as the Practical Option. For hospital settings pursuing accreditation, it is required in order for their, their organizations to receive payment from federally funded Medicare and Medicaid programs. Once the healthcare organization achieves accreditation through the Joint Commission, Center for Improvement in Healthcare Quality, or another approved agency, it has met federal requirements, which I will describe in more detail later in the presentation. Now that we've compared the most common accrediting bodies for health plans and hospital settings in general, we are ready to do a deep dive into the value that each accreditation body offers. Let's start with NCQA and URAC. National Committee for Quality Assurance, commonly referred as NCQA. It's recognized across the healthcare industry as a gold standard. NCQA assists health plans work together to improve quality and lower costs. NCQA accredits health plans that deliver high quality care and reinforce important safeguards to protect the people they cover. NCQA health plan accreditation is a widely recognized evidence-based program dedicated to quality improvement and measurement. It's the only evaluation program that bases results on actual measurements of clinical performance. For example, HEDIS measures and consumer experience such as CAPS measure. 
government and private sector clients hire NCQA through contracts and grants to help them measure and improve quality. Here are some examples of requirements. For Medicaid, 26 states require health plans to be accredited by NCQA, with seven others accepting health plan accreditation, HPA as a meeting broad accreditation requirement. Some states are requiring health plans and managed behavioral health care organizations to seek long-term services and support distinction. 29 public sectors are required to use NCQA patient-centered medical home recognitions across 24 states. Commercial, 33 states. Recognition, example, accreditation exempts entity from other regulatory requirements or demonstrates meeting requirements. Presently, 41 states require CHEDIS reporting and all Medicare Advantage MA plans report their performance to NCQA. Medicare Advantage Deeming. Medicare allows plans and the federal government to use a plan's NCQA accreditation status. So why choose NCQA accreditation? What's the value proposition? Well, NCQA health plan accreditation standards assist health plans improve in the areas of quality improvement process, population health management, practitioner network and access to care, utilization management processes, credentialing, recredentialing and delegation processes, members' rights and responsibilities, member connections, Medicaid service requirements, and value-based payment arrangements for providers and or plans utilizing fetus quality measures. Now let's talk about Utilization Review Accreditation Commission, commonly referred as URAC. It is recognized across the healthcare industry as the gold star, the easier option. It was founded in 1990. URAC is the independent leader in promoting healthcare quality through leadership, accreditation, measurement, and innovation. URAC is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that uses evidence-based measures and develop standards through engagement with stakeholders committed to improving the quality of healthcare. The UREC portfolio of accreditation and certification programs spans the healthcare industry, addressing healthcare management and operations, health plans, specialty, community pharmacies, telehealth services, patient-centered home, medical home, and more. Here are some examples of requirements. CMS beam status for federal programs, including Medicare home infusion therapy supplier, health plan, health plan with a health exchange and Medicare advantage. The following programs require accreditation or certification for compliance under state and or federal agency. Four states require case management. One state requires credentialing. One state requires health call center. 13 states require health plan. One state requires home and infusion therapy supplier. Seven states require health utilization management. 33 states require independent review organization. And lastly, seven states require workers' compensation utilization management. So why choose your accreditation as an alternate to NCQA? What's the value proposition? Well, your accreditation national standards help plans to meet regulatory or network requirements. Improving areas of, similar to NCQA, quality improvement process, population health management, practitioner network and access to care. Utilization management processes, credentialing, recredentialing, and delegation processes. 
Whereas Zurich offers improvements in the areas of case management, disease management, pharmacy, and physician of care. Zurich has a robust accreditation and or certification program selection that health plans and organizations can seek accreditation and or certification. Now that we've reviewed the value that NCQA and NURAC offers, we'll do a deep dive into why healthcare organizations, particularly hospital settings, should consider TJC and CAHQ accreditation. Formerly known as JACO and recognized across the healthcare industry as the market leader, the Joint Commission was founded in 1951 and is an independent, not-for-profit organization. It's the nation's oldest and largest standard setting and accrediting body. The Joint Commission's goal is to continuously improve healthcare for the public in collaboration with other stakeholders through the evaluation and ensuring the delivery of safe, effective, and quality care. The Joint Commission accredits and certifies more than 22,000 healthcare organizations and programs in the United States. Its accreditation programs include ambulatory care, behavioral health care, critical access hospitals, home care, hospitals, lab services, long-term care, and office-based surgery. Its certification programs include disease-specific care and healthcare staffing services. The Joint Commission surveyors visit accredited healthcare organizations a minimum of once every three years to evaluate standards compliance. Approximately 82% of hospitals in the U.S. are currently accredited by the Joint Commission. The Joint Commission is a CMS deemed status provider. This means that it is essentially required in order for the healthcare organization to receive payment from federally funded Medicare and Medicaid programs. In other words, the Joint Commission accreditation, with the Joint Commission accreditation, your healthcare organization would meet federal requirements. The Joint Commission maintains a list of state agencies that recognize accreditation and certification to identify state regulatory agencies that recognize and or rely on accreditation in lieu of specific state licensure or certification requirements. So why choose the Joint Commission accreditation? What's the value proposition? As the Joint Commission standards are the basis of an objective evaluation process, they help your healthcare organization measure, assess, and improve performance with a focus on patient safety and quality of care. The Joint Commission accreditation is comprehensive. It exceeds CMS conditions of participation. There are more than 250 hospital accreditation standards, and they address everything from patient rights and education, infection control, medication management and preventing medical errors, to how the hospital verifies that its clinicians and other staff are qualified and competent, how it prepares, prepares for emergencies, and how it collects data on its performance and uses that data to improve itself. Lastly, but not least, the Joint Commission is the only accreditor that actively supports healthcare organizations through Sentinel or adverse events with advice from safety experts. Next, let's dive into the Center for Improvement in Healthcare Quality, also known as CAHQ. It is the newest hospital accreditation option, originally formed in 1999. It was developed and recognized across the healthcare industry as the practical accreditation option, the alternative to the Joint Commission. CAHQ is a membership organization with more than 360 hospitals and other healthcare entities throughout the United States. CMS accepts accreditation by CAHQ to deem acute care hospitals to be in compliance with the CMS conditions of participation. CAHQ's accreditation programs include hospitals participating in me Medicare, as well as hospitals not participating in Medicare. Its disease-specific certification programs include acute stroke-ready hospitals, primary stroke centers, thrombectomy-capable stroke centers, comprehensive stroke centers, heart failure, and joint replacement surgery. Its center of excellence designation programs include long-term acute care, rehabilitation services, environmental health and safety, respiratory therapy, nursing services, 
palliative care and emergency services. Approximately 121 hospitals are currently accredited by the CIHQ. Like the Joint Commission, CIHQ is a CMS deemed status provider. This means that it is essentially required in order for the healthcare organization to receive payment from federally funded Medicare and Medicaid programs. In other words, with the CIHQ accreditation, your healthcare organization would meet federal requirements. So why choose CIHQ accreditation as an alternate to the Joint Commission or another accrediting body? Three proposition. CIHQ standards are straightforward. CIHQ standards are primarily about 95% based on CMS's conditions of participation. CIHQ mirrors the CMS conditions of participation and state operations manual guidance. The 28 chapters in its manual very closely resemble, resemble the names of the CMS chapters. Additionally, CIHQ membership offers valuable resources, such as access to standards and survey procedures, monthly audio conferences, documentation tools to assist in compliance efforts, access to web-based reference library with links to healthcare regulations, notification of changes in standards and CMS regulations, as well as access to in-house experts for CIHQ or CMS standards interpretation. In conclusion, we'd like to pull it all together, keeping in mind the overall benefits, best in class, and prestige that accreditation brings. Presently, there are thousands of healthcare organizations throughout the U.S. that are either accredited by one or more accredited bodies or seeking accreditation. There are many reasons why healthcare organizations should consider accredit accreditation, for example, mechanisms to ensure compliance with healthcare regulations, improve quality of care, increased community confidence, better operational efficiency and processes, reduce liability insurance that may decrease insurance costs, gain competitive advantage, and access to resources such as shared policies and procedures, best practices, insights through external review. Seeking accreditation is something that can protect your healthcare organization from a make it or break it compliance issue down the road. Having the assurance that operations are fully compliant with the regulatory authority, accreditation will distinguish the organization as best in class. Accreditation creates a culture of compliance and quality. It shows that the organization is proactive and does not take a reactive approach by solely addressing compliance issues as they come up. A culture that does not have compliance and quality at top of mind puts the organization at risk. Resolving issues after the fact can be expensive and time consuming. With accreditation, the healthcare organization gains prestige. For an organization to be able to demonstrate both that it understands the regulatory environment and, that, and its offered services, this can ease the mind of the state regulators and consumers knowing the organization's accreditation status. Accreditation is something that healthcare organizations should strongly consider. We would like to express our appreciation to you for joining us today. And if you have any follow-up questions or comments, please contact us directly via our contact information on the next slide. Thank, Thank you. you.